momento, ¿no podría esto darnos cáncer de piel? Muchas compañías de productos nos dan unas cremas que bloquean el UVB o ultravioleta B del sol. Estos son los rayos que necesitas para producir la vitamina D en la piel. The UVA rays that the sunblock lotions allow to get in are the ones causing the cancer. So they let the one that causes skin cancer in and they block the one that prevents it. Las estadísticas demuestran que el cáncer y los riesgos del cáncer ha subido desde que se usan tanto las cremas y que empezaron las campañas de los protectores del sol hace unos años. Canel recomienda que mantengas tu exposición al sol moderado y no se creen que cualquier exposición al sol, da igual que tiempo, puede ser beneficiosa. Después está el tema de mm, pieles más oscuras, que normalmente bloquea más los eh, rayos de UVB, que hacen la vitamina D. Y sus niveles de D son la mitad de las personas con piel más blanca. Y esto está conectado con las enfermedades que hacen que su vida sea más corta. Disease and hypertension and stroke and cancer are the same diseases that have been associated with vitamin D deficiencies. El escritor médico Bill Sardi dice que si la vitamina D fuera una droga, sus beneficios la harían lo más popular que ninguna otra. Instead of using fluoride to harden our teeth so there's no soft spots where the acids can then uh, eat into our teeth and cause dental decay, we can use vitamin D. It's more appropriate, it's more natural. And la vitamina D parece aumentar la acción atlética. Just clear evidence, especially in the German literature, of uh, choice reaction time, uh, balance, uh, muscle strength, uh, endurance, all improve with vitamin D. Lo que puede explicar por qué los, los viejos que están tomando vitamina D no se caen y no pierden el, el equilibrio. Y sobre el cáncer hay un libro que dice que una de las razones por las cuales no deberías de tener miedo al cáncer es la vitamina D. Un estudio del pasado junio dijo que había un 60% de reducción en cáncer. Aquí tenéis un vídeo donde la flecha de cómo él, la vitamina D suprime las células cancerosas. Highest levels had had four times less colon cancer than the people with the lowest levels. I think that's pretty important. Y sobre fortificar la comida, incluso la leche con vitamina D provee muy poco, es trivial. Tomar suplementos es bastante más predecible que el tomar el sol. Y la única fuente en el invierno para millones de personas. Los expertos dicen que lo más normal es tomar por lo menos 2.000 unidades para los niños y 4.000 para los adultos. Sin embargo, el gobierno solamente recomienda 200 y 600 unidades para los adultos. And the government's been recommending this now for 10 years. They, they refuse to change their... They refuse to, up, they refuse to even look at the science. Canal y su mujer han tomado cientos de miles de unidades en algún momento para combatir resfriados o gripe. Normalmente toman como 5.000 unidades, una docena más de lo que recomienda el gobierno. The Lord is saying that there's a system that makes this much vitamin D this quickly, thousands of units a day from sun exposure. And here's a government over here saying you only need a couple of a hundred units a day. So you can sort of ask yourself, who do you want to believe? God or the government? Galen tell you one of us. I believe we all need optimal amounts to healthy sun exposure. And why? Because when the sun shines on skin that does not have clothing on it, that ultraviolet B radiation in normal sunlight is going to cause the cholesterol in your skin to convert to vitamin D. And vitamin D is deficient in 85% of the U.S. population. We now know that it causes 2 million people every year to die from cancer. Yes, cancer is your number one risk for dying. So it's really important that you get off amounts of vitamin D and I believe the best way to get that is through sun exposure, not from swallowing vitamin D capsules. Have exposure to the sun. It's really broken down into two primary wavelengths, ultraviolet A or UVA and ultraviolet B or UVB. And the UVB is actually one of the more beneficial rays because when it, it, it uh, hits our skin, then we, we're going to get the vitamin D. But the UVA actually is what is now believed to be the primary risk factor for cancer. And there's some important differences in those in the wavelengths of UVA and UVB that have some practical implications on how you uh, take care of yourself and your family. And that is that uh, UVB has a wavelength that is more easily filtered 
uh, in the atmosphere so that on a cloudy day or early in the morning, later in the afternoon, you're not going to be able to get as much, much of that radiation on your skin and make vitamin D. However, on cloud, the UVA is not as easily filtered because of its wavelength and it will more easily penetrate the atmosphere in clouds and you will still increase your risk of cancer in, in those situations or in the early morning or, or later afternoon. So you do have to be very careful here. So ideally you want to uh, have the ideal amount of exposure to, your, 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 to the sun and is the color of your skin. So if you're very light complexion and your relatives and ancestors are from Northern Europe, then you probably may need as little as a few minutes, in, at least initially in the beginning of the season, because you never really want to get your skin more than just a tiny bit pink. And, and that means you've reached your saturation point and probably are making as much vitamin D as you're going to, which in, in many cases can go up to as many as 20,000 units of vitamin D per day. And the beautiful thing, as you probably know, when you get your sun, sun or vitamin D from the sun, is that your body has a, a, a feedback loop which limits it from overdosing and that can be a real problem so that's why I like getting it from vitamin getting the vitamin D from the Sun so if you already have enough then you want to limit your exposure and one of the best ways to do it is to wear long sleeve shirts and pants and a protective hat um, or stay in the shade now many for many of us and for our kids of course this is not simple simply practical because we're going to the beach or at the pool and they just enjoy playing outside. And there's nothing wrong with that. So of course, many of us are using sunscreens. There's some really important considerations here that you need to know about sunscreens. One is that many of them do not screen for ultraviolet A, and that is just insane and ridiculous. So the first principle is that you need to look at your sunscreens to make sure they're screening for UVA. Because if it's not, all you're doing is screening for UVB, and what, what, what do you do? You actually stop the production of vitamin D. So as we mentioned earlier, the low doses of vitamin D is actually what's responsible for one of the primary factors for increasing this risk of cancer. So you actually impair your body's ability to, to prevent and uh, treat nothing to protect against the UVA rays which are increasing the risk of cancer. So that is just ridiculous. You have to. So independent of that, however, there are the chemicals that are actually used as the filtering agents. And you have to be really careful on them. There's a lot of potentially dangerous ones. Some, make sure that's not in there because when this, is, this chemical is exposed to something, it actually makes it more toxic. And it has been shown to have lots of problems and complications as have many of the other chemicals in there. And, and for a long list, just read the page that this, this uh, video is on and you'll see you'll find more details, but you clearly want to read the label of the, of the sunscreen you're using to make sure it has none of those dangerous chemicals in it. So that's three. You know, we've, we do a lot of research on, on our team and we've identified a product that we think is really the, the resources and the, the knowledge that you need so that you can take care of yourself and your family and your kids so that you can start to all take control.